continuing in our study on the book of Proverbs. Last Sunday we went through the third chapter and I'm going to go back and cover a couple points that I, I felt that I needed to. There was a, an opportunity that was offered for me to go back to have a shot. So I, I do, I thank Sister Carolyn and I hope that she told you Thank you, Sister Francis, yes, and that yes, for having this opportunity just to go back and maybe cover some things I felt a little bit rushed on last Sunday. But I want to I want to go look in chapter three, beginning in verse number seven. Chapter three, beginning with verse seven. It reads, "Be not wise in thine own eyes. Fear the Lord, and depart from evil." This particular verse, though it be short, though it be not many words, is the, it is the major problem with the Christian world today. Be not wise in your own eyes. It doesn't say be not wise. But it says do not be wise in your own eyes. Whenever we mention the word wisdom and we speak of one who is wise, we automatically and almost 100% of the time, we think of worldly wisdom. We think of someone who has made it. They are above everything. They, are, they have answered every problem. They're, there's nothing that they haven't figured out in life. But wisdom for the child of God is completely the opposite. It is completely the opposite. Because the way the world views wisdom, the scripture says it is earthly. It is sensual. It is devilish. It is not of God whenever we operate in the wisdom of this world. So we have to, to remember and know as a child of God, when we speak of the wisdom to be not wise in your own eyes. See, we, we every person in this place can, can go back to being wise in our own eyes. We can regress back into that. And I'm going to make a statement this morning, and I believe through the help of the Holy Spirit and looking into his word this morning, that this, this, that, I, you know, I'm finding more and more places in the scripture that promotes and supports and proves that the message of the finished work of the cross is more real than you and I give it credit many times. Amen. And it's it is more important yes. Amen. than we at first glance see it. Amen. Even as this scripture tells us here, when we're not wise in our own eyes, that means we have surrendered now everything that of who we are and we have put it into him and we are looking now unto him. We are looking, as the scripture says, unto Jesus, the scripture says, who is the author and the finisher right. of what? Faith. Of our faith. Of our faith. And you know what? Without our faith, you know, that, that puts us in, you know, a uh, default position. Yeah. And you don't want to go there. Your faith has to be in the correct object. That's right. And he being the author, and he being the finisher, we are continually to look unto the one who has put us on the path, the one who is keeping us on the path, and is going to make sure we get to where the path is leading. Amen? We have to continue to look unto Jesus. So when we're not wise in our own eyes, he says to fear the Lord. Fear the Lord, he says. That starts 
by getting into his word and not just to make it something that we put on the mantle or something that's in the coffee on the coffee table or something that we you know want to be sure that so and so sees it when they come or sees it in our car or sees us carrying it where there's so many people that are still in that that mind frame, that, that understanding, that they, they don't take it seriously. You know, there's people, and I don't, and I understand this is just paper and ink and imitation leather I'm holding in front of you and glue and some binding and some stitching. But what it contains, what I believe that it says, means more to me than anything I could ever gain from this life. Amen. So I should honor this book. Amen. I should treat it with care. And I realize through use and wear, we sometimes have to replace them. And it's a sad thing <laughs> when we have to get away from the old ones that we've had and get in a brand new one. I've done that a few years ago. And this was, it just ain't the same. But it's still the same because the message is still the same and I believe it the same, but I'm not going to just throw this thing around. I'm not going to put it on the floorboard of my car and, you know, and, and within the, the trash heap, you know, that may be over in our floorboard at times because, you know, we ought not throw things out the window. Put it in the, but, you know, don't, don't let it go too long because it'll be your extra passenger back there if you're not careful. So we should keep it in a good place, but the most importantly, when we have that within our heart to know that if, it's, if, it's, if we're viewing it correctly and we're not wise in our own eyes, we are fearing the Lord, then we understand the part that this plays in our life, whether, we use, whether it's on an uh, electronic device or whether we still use this edition, um, we must understand that it is a holy thing before God. Amen. And it should be viewed that way. It should be a part of our daily bread that we eat and we consume and we take into our life. He says, to depart from evil. Be not wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. That pretty well gives us our instructions for life right there. That's right. There it is. Right there in front of us. We're not, we shouldn't be waiting for someone to come by That's right. and pull us from the wrong way. When he has given us instruction to depart from evil. That's right. And the good thing about this, these things work together. So when we make that choice and that decision to not be wise in our own eyes, and I have made that, that willful decision that I'm going to reverence, have a reverent fear of God in my life, he will ensure to promote within our, our self, our person, our mind, that we don't want to do evil no more. When things are in order. Now I understand there's some strongholds. Okay? I understand that. And they don't seem to leave as fast as some have, you know, have experienced it. Some may experience it easier and faster than others. But when we put our mind to it, when we put when we put our will into his will, and our mind is made up that the strongholds are going to come down. They're coming down because I'm not going to back up from what his word says. I'm not going to live under that control of my life anymore. And the Lord will continue to show us the things in our life that, that, that we need to, you know, let, let, me, let me fix this for you. But we can't be wise in our own eyes. But at the same point, it's saying be wise. So this morning, I'm going I'm to hopefully be able to show you and minister to you in some of this that 
the wisdom of God can be wrapped up in the very message of Jesus Christ and him crucified. That is the wisdom of God. Absolutely. That's it. That is the wisdom of God. And if we have departed from that, or we have rejected that, or we have in some way tried to mix something else with that, then we are now in violation of verse 7. We have become wise in our own eyes. That's right. We're not, we do not have the proper fear of the Lord, and we are still in the evil way. Because there's only one way that God will recognize for, for a victory, for life and living, and that is through the eternal sacrifice that was gave, gave one time. He suffered once, never to, be, never to go there again. But he done it, and he done it for all, and that whosoever will could come and take from that tree of life and have eternal life. Yes, praise God. But we cannot, we cannot overlook things like this when the scripture tells us these things and, and so, so plainly puts it. He says, it shall be health to thy navel and marrow to thy bones. You never hear anything. And the medical field and the reports that you hear on TV for the things that promote long life concerning your faith in God. I don't ever hear anything or hear them say anything about that. Now, don't get me wrong. I think, I believe that when our faith is correctly placed in his will, in his provision, then we have the comforter. We have the helper. We have the teacher now who is ever with us. And he will guide you. He will instruct you. He will put it within your mind and in your thinking to create a healthier way of life. Do you believe that? I believe that. I believe he's the best dietitian in the world, in the universe. If there's things in our health that we're battling, mm -hmm. he will give you the solution yes, if you listen. <laughs> if, if, if we can, can get away from, you know, what just seems to hold us the most and just turn more to him, he will set you free. The bondage of sugar. The bondage of sugar. <laughs> Thank you, Sister Francis. That is, that's, that is, that is more... I think can, can be more of a problem and just as addictive as the illicit drugs that is on the street today. Because you gotta have it. Now, sugar is not a bad thing. It's just too much of it. The Bible says eat a little. Thank you. Thank you. A little. A little. <laughs> so the Bible says honey. Just eat a little honey. It no. sounds good to me. <laughs> a little. I bought a cake yesterday at the store, and this young man said, that's a massive cake. I said, yeah, and it makes the people that eat it massive, too. <laughs> a little honey. A little sugar. A little sweet. The Lord said he would cause us to to enjoy the sweet and the fat. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> but we got to have a, we got to have a, uh, you know, a restriction there. There's, there's got to be a, uh, the Holy Spirit's got to be there ever present. Okay. Amen. So you, you eat too much of that. That's right. You better stop that. Because he'll talk to you, but will we listen? It'll be health, he says. <clears throat> To your navel. We talked about that a little bit last Sunday. Of the navel and the important, of course, that's the, from the time that the embryo is growing within, the, within its mother's womb, his or her mother's womb, there's an umbilical cord there attached at the navel. And they provide, it is provi provided through that, the provision is made 
for everything that embryo needs to, to live, to exist, to grow, to be nurtured, to mature, until the time that it's ready to be, to be birthed. Right. Then there is, of course, we know there is a separation. It has to be separate. We know that. So our relationship then, as Jesus even said, that I am the true vine. In John 14, I am the true vine and my father is the husband. And I'm going to skip a few verses, but he says, I am the vine and you are the branches. Unless we abide in him, he says, for without me, you can do nothing. We have to be part of the vine. The Holy Spirit that God promised that would live within us as being a new creation in Christ. We sometimes tell him to get in the back seat. I'm driving. Oh, yeah. God forgive me. I pray. I don't want that anymore. I want him to do the driving. I'm just, I'm just alone for the ride. I want the Holy Spirit to always lead God and direct. And I want to, I want to emphasize that fact that through the, the revelation of the finished work of the cross working within the believer's life, then the Holy Spirit, through the scripture, we have evidence and proof that he then can come and help us. He then can take the wheel. He then can do the driving. He then can get us from point A to point B and wherever we need to be in life. The power of the Holy Spirit is what we can, can always rest assured that he is always there. He is always enough and ever powerful to help with whatever it is we're going through. Hallelujah. He, he's, he's, our, he's everything. Yes. And it's God, God it, is, it is God himself. We know that. Mm -hmm. The doctrines of the scripture teach that the Holy Spirit is God. Now, don't you want God with you? I do. I want him with me. I want him to, to work in me and change me and make me into what I, I'm supposed to be. He says that through these things, being held to your navel and marrow to thy bones, this is, a, this is a picture of the developmental process from the, as I mentioned earlier, from the, from the embryo. And even the scripture says that, they, that, that the, I forget word for word how that it, 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 it puts it, but that how that they marvel at how even the bones grow in the womb. There's a scripture for that. I, I can't give it to you from chapter and verse right now, but it's there. It is. Man don't know how that happens, but God, God knows. Mm -hmm. God knows. So when we leave that place, when we leave that, that first home that we have, that we, our bones are there now to strengthen and begin to grow and to begin to support and enable to provide that, that way that we can do the walking, that we can do the running when that's necessary even as well. It's all part of our Christian growth, church. We need to understand that we're still growing. Do not get discouraged and, 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 un, and upset if it just seems like it ain't happening as fast as you want it to happen. Just don't stop. It takes time. You don't get there overnight. This is a line upon line, precept upon precept. And I, can, I believe we can look at it and, and know that it's day by day. We continue day by day. We continue day by day, every day, by the same faith that we that we lived yesterday. We're going to live by that faith today. Right. It's the same faith, and it's and it's going to work. And it's just give us some time. Don't quit. Don't stop trusting in your God, right. because He ain't going to fail you. He's growing you. He's molding us. He's making us. 
He's, he's, we're going through growing pains at times and, and things that, that seem difficult. But hang on. It's going to come about. We're going to have to continue to encourage ourselves in that. And, and don't dismiss the little victories that we experience about things that used to just drive us crazy. But now it don't even bother us. You know, there's one thing, and I ain't mentioned anything to Lord about this. So I may have to talk to y'all after a while. <laughs> but you know, just, just when you're married to somebody, okay, and you live with them for any length of time, you're going to find out something about them that bothers you. And I ain't going to get into that. Okay? That's a good thing. Y'all, y'all, I'm going to ask y'all for some grace this morning. <laughs> I ain't getting into that because that's not the important part. But, you know, little things, they just, they don't even bother me no more. Yeah. Whatever. Whatever. So, things that used to want to just get us so upset or so mad, and we'll talk another time. <laughs> we'll talk might, about it later. might have a meeting all the way home. There's probably things about me that make you mad or did used to make you mad that they don't make you mad too much more. <laughs> okay. Okay. I, I, didn't, I didn't mean to get too bogged down in this, but the, the point is if we will let God change us, the, per, the other person may not change. That's but right. he'll change you. Yes, that's right. And that's what's important. Mm -hmm. That's what's important. He'll change you. Yes. Praise yes. God. Amen. All right. Amen. I'm going to skip down because, I, like I said, I'm just kind of recovering some things, going back over some things. <clears throat> he says in verse number 13, happy is the man that finds wisdom and the man that gets understanding. So there is a difference the wisdom that comes as we are, have received the message, now we're to grow in that message. Now we are to advance in our understanding and our knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. He says the merchandise of it is better. It's better. It's better than the merchandise of silver and the gain thereof than fine gold. We will do anything Seems like at times in our life for enough money. If you just pay me enough money, I'll do it. If you just pay me enough money. You know, we as a Christian shouldn't operate like that. Now God will bless you times more. There may be a season that you receive more money through a, a job, through a position, through an advancement in your job. But listen, we're not to seek that, that kind of stuff. Right. Right. You know, I went through a time, and I may have shared this before, when I, I thought I needed a raise on my job. Has anybody ever thought that? Never. Be honest. Yeah. Everybody, I think, at times is going to think that, whether they really do or not. I've never had a job. So. <laughs> <laughs> okay. You know what? The way the Christian's supposed to handle that, I, I don't think you ought to ever have to mention it. <laughs> Trust me. I, I, let me just put it to you this way. That's, what the, that's how the Lord dealt with me. Mm -hmm. He even gave me a scripture. And he says, even as the prophet John the Baptist told those, those Romans and, and centurions, he said, to be content with your wages. That's what the Holy Spirit spoke to my heart. And it wasn't just a short while after that, it just showed up. Hallelujah. Even during the time when, you know, at most jobs give raises at certain times of the year, this raise showed up before that time ever came. I never said a word. Hallelujah. I thanked my company for that. Hallelujah. But I, I never put my, and I wanted to, I wanted to, to put my chest up and, and call a meeting and ask why come and why this and I, I need this. No, God said don't do that. He said be content with your wages. 
So he had to help me with that. He provided the grace to do that. But I've seen the miracle work and power of God in that. I don't discredit that. That's a victory. That's a victory for trusting in what the Holy Spirit's telling you to do. He'll, he will show himself strong. But it's to those. Who's it, who's it to? It's for those who are expecting him. Those who are looking to him. Those who are trusting in him. It ain't for those that's trying to put themselves out front. He will do the promoting. He will do, he will give you what you want you to have when he wants you to have it. Yes, he will. And I believe that with all my heart. He says the merchandise is better. It's better than anything silver or gold can, can ever imagine to get to us. This merchandise of wisdom and understanding. She's more precious than rubies and all things that you can desire are not to be compared unto her. Look at the promises. Length of days in her right hand, in her left hand, riches and honor. So he's got it in correct order even. It's more important to know as being a child of God that we can rejoice in the fact of knowing him and being saved and being washed in the blood of the Lamb Amen. and the riches and honor are just come. Amen. That's, that's what's in our left hand. Praise God. That's, he's, he's in control of that. Amen. We just Our job is just to magnify him and to praise him. Her ways are the ways of pleasantness, and all her paths are peace. It's profitable, church. It's profitable to have and to keep and to uphold the true message of Jesus Christ and Him crucified. I'm telling you. If you're not in a church that's, that's, that's promoting it, get there. Wherever you're at. The Holy Spirit will lead you if you'll just look to Him and ask Him. Telling the people in the camera. <laughs> He'll do it. Mm -hmm. But we, we've got to we've got to do what he says to do. We can't just say, well, that's not close to where I live. That's right. Now that, you know, even if you can't make it but one service a week, gotta take care of the rest. He'll give you what you need. He's he's he just needs a willing and yielded vessel. To give to you the things he wants to begin to build in your life. This is, this is the things we're talking about. She is a tree of life. Them that lay hold upon her. It says she is a tree of life. Them that lay hold upon her. To them. To them. So when we receive, we are to lay hold and never let go. Not to let go for whatever, for whatever, whatever reason, for whatever reason. Happy is everyone that retaineth her. I want to skip down. Brother Mark. Yes, Brother Roger. The, the tree of life is mentioned in Genesis. Yes. It's mentioned in Revelation. Absolutely. And the only other place it's mentioned is the book of Proverbs. Yes. You would probably do as well to look up every reference to the tree of life. Yes. And see what it says. Yes. Yeah. Well, see, the, the point I made last Sunday is that every word between Genesis and Revelation, we have an invitation to the tree of life. Mm -hmm. It's there. Jesus is the tree of life for us today. And his word, his invitation into us is to come. Is to come. Even as he said in the book of Hosea, I think it's chapter 14, where the prophet Hosea was, was calling for Israel to turn unto the Lord and to repent. He says to take with you words. That's right. Take with you words and return back unto the Lord your God. That's amazing, yes. Church, it's important. It's important for us to realize this, that even the things that come forth out of our mouth, when we, when we pray, we need to talk to God. Yes. We need to tell him that, Lord, I'm, I'm sorry for what I've done. I repent for it. Not just, just thinking that he knows, but he, he, we got to take words to him. 
Let's, let's go to the Lord with words. Take words with you when you go to the Lord and talk to him. And reveal the things that he already knows about you. Just, just have that. Go with me, if you will, now to James. I want to look real, real close. I, I, I wanted to go into that last Sunday. And I told you to go study it, go read it. Does anybody here that was here then remember me saying that? <laughs> James chapter 4. And uh, I want to look at this real quick. Because I have one more place I want to go. Uh, I'm going to read some of this kind of fast because I, I do want to include it. So it will, will kind of make more of a effect. There's nothing like just taking the word of God and reading it aloud. Amen. Amen. Because there's power there. There's things that you may have never heard. You may have read it a hundred times. and may have never heard what the spirit of God wants to put in your heart. Amen. Amen. For whence come wars and fightings among you? Come they not hence even of your lust that war in your members? You lust and you have not. You kill and you desire to have and cannot obtain. You fight in war. Yet you have not because you ask not. I'm supposed to ask. I'm supposed to ask, first of all. I, I, I need to come to God and ask. The first thing that we do when we come to God, we ask for him to come and save us. Lord, I repent. And I ask you to be my Savior. Oh, what a, what, a, what a blessed time. Ye ask, ye receive not, because you ask amiss that you may consume it upon your lust. You adulterers and adulteresses, know ye not that the friendship of the world is enmity with God? Whosoever, therefore, will be a friend of the world is the enemy of God. Do you think that the Scripture saith in vain? The spirit that dwelleth in us lusts to envy. The spirit that dwelleth within us. God's own spirit that lives within us. But he gives more grace. Wherefore he saith, God resists the proud, but giveth grace unto the humble. Submit yourselves therefore to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Look at verse 8. Draw nigh unto God, and he will draw nigh to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, ye double-minded. We cannot be divided to go two different ways or two different thoughts. We've got to have one, one faith. The scripture says there is one faith. There is one faith, and it's our faith planted and securely put within his sacrifice that we're never to go to another. There are many other gospels that go forward, but they're not the gospel. There is other Jesuses that are promoted, but it's not the Jesus of the cross. That's what we are to understand. That's my job, my, my responsibility. To hear from God, to know whether or not what I'm hearing and what I'm participating with is the true message. Is it the one faith? He gives grace to the humble. Remember that. We cannot be proudful and arrogant within our, our own selves and our own, uh, you know, who we are. And look what we've done and how far we came. And, and I used not to have nothing and now God's given me this. We can boast in our God without boasting in ourselves. So be careful. Be careful to not that we don't forget from where our blessings come from. Right. You find do you find out when you start thanking God for your blessing and counting your blessing that it just makes you smaller and smaller and smaller? Because I didn't get them with my own hand. Now I've done what his word said to do with his help. With his help. God don't bless laziness. Can I say that? Amen. He don't bless laziness. There's a lot of people say God's blessing me, but they're lazy. I don't believe God's blessing laziness no. these days. He ain't changed his mind about laziness. No. You don't have to have the hardest job in the world. You understand what I'm saying? There's a lot of jobs you can do that aren't 
that, that aren't going to put you in the, in the grave when you're 60 years old. Understand that. But we're not to be lazy. We're not to be lazy. This is part of our, this is part of us understanding that whenever we turn and, and we submit ourselves and we're, and we're humble before him, that God will not resist you, but he will bless you. He will give you more grace to, to go through what you're going through. The Holy Spirit then has the, the privilege and the opportunity to come on your behalf and to work in you when we're humble before him. When we, when we begin to just remember how he's blessed us. As our faith is correct, and I don't have to keep going through that, but as we keep our faith correct, and we exercise the things the scripture is telling us to do, we, we can just be more and more and more confident and to know that he is right there with us, giving us the grace that we need for today, yeah. giving us the help that we're going to need for tomorrow, the direction that we've already think that we're, we're going to go, we'll just continue to trust and believe him. He'll give us the direction, and he'll see that we get to where we're supposed to be. He even goes as far to say to be afflicted and mourn and weep and let your laughter be turned to mourning and your joy to heaviness. So I see that as taking the things that, that are puffed up and, 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 and full of the world and the, the wisdom of the things of this world and being wise in my own eyes that, that, I'm, that I've got laughter in myself and I've got uh, proud pride in myself. He says to humble yourself in the sight of the Lord, verse 10, and he shall lift you up. We've got to stay humble. We've got to remain in that place of, of humility. But guess who's going to help you do that? Nobody but the Lord. If we'll let him, if we'll let him, if we'll ask him, if we'll, if we'll just ask, Lord, help, help me. Help me in this. Help me to, to, to do the things I'm supposed to do here. I want to look real quick at the last part of the chapter. Go to now, ye that say today or tomorrow, we will go into such a city and continue there a year and buy and sell and get gain. Whereas you know not what shall be on the morrow. For what is your life? It is even a vapor that appears for a little time and then vanishes away. For that you ought to say, say that this is what I ought to say. If the Lord will, that keep that right there keeps me in a place of humility because I don't make my own decisions anymore. If the Lord will, we need to we need to get back to letting that be in our in our language. If the Lord will. If the Lord will. I, I mean, with the Lord's help, with the Lord's help, I'm, I'm trying to, to put that in part of the things that I say. In my heart, I believe it and I trust it, but I need to say it. That's right. That's right. Take with you words, the scripture says. Right. We need to say these things. We need to hear ourselves say them. What you ought to say, if the Lord will, we shall live mm -hmm. and do this or that. That's right. But now you rejoice in your boastings. All such rejoicing is evil. Yeah. There's only one thing that the Lord has given for us to rejoice in. To rejoice in him and the fact that our names are written down in the Lamb's Book of Life. That's right. I'm going to tell you what. There would be people trying to hold us back at times when we are rejoicing so much in that fact. When, we, when that has been made known unto us and Jesus Christ has been revealed unto us and what he has done for us, it was done for us. Yeah. They, I mean, there would be people, if, not, if we ain't careful, they're going to want to throw 
something over us and try to contain us because we're rejoicing in that fact night and day. Since he came and washed my sins away. I don't know if that's a song, but it sounds, it rhymes. I'm rejoicing night and day since I know that he washed my sins away. I don't know, I just made that up. I don't know. <laughs> sounds, it's, it's scriptural. Okay, thank you. All right, let's, real quick, real quick. But to therefore to him that knoweth to do good, and doeth it not to him, it is sin. That is, sin, of course, is a problem. It's, it's not okay just to sin and to, oh, well, the Lord will forgive me. Sin always has consequences yep. to the child of God, and we're never to forget that. I want to read very quickly. I got a minute and a half in the book of Titus. I want to back up, I want to back this up, what I told you a while ago, that I believe that this message, this message, which is the wisdom of God, it says in chapter 2, y'all know the scripture, but I'm going to read it. Verse 11, he says, for the grace of God that bringeth salvation hath appeared to all men, teaching us teaching us, what's going to teach us? The grace of God. is going to teach us that denying ungodliness and worldly lust, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world. You can go look at 1 Corinthians. I'm not going to go there because I'm out of time. 1 Corinthians, the first chapter, 17 and 18, and 21 through 24 says it right there that he is the wisdom of God. His plan, his, the very Christ that when he came to became the one and only sacrifice needed for the sin of the world, that is the wisdom of God. Thank you all for your attention. I hope that I just, just uh, might have helped you in some way again. Amen. Be blessed today. Rejoice Amen. in the fact that we have the right to rejoice. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Thank you.